tip-off, but first, let's hear from our very own David Aldridge. D.A., it's all yours. Thank you, Kevin. The Pacers are never an easy out. Malcolm Brogdon says this team always exceeds the expectations. It takes after the Midwest city that fights for everything they have. We've got the building blocks to be elite and to win a championship ultimately. Kevin, you gotta like that kind of confidence. And those kind of words, D.A., right from a guy that leads like he does. Terrific story. Thank you, David. Now look at Memphis's starting group. Adams at center with Jackson next to him. Then it's Brooks. Then it's Morant. And it's Bain in at the shooting guard position. And for Indiana, the guard pair are Brogdon and Levert. In the post, it's Sabonis and Turner. And it's Craig in at the small forward position. And late in the season, we see playoff teams, Greg, resting their star play. Any excuse for lottery teams doing the same thing? <laughs> Not as far as the league is. the goal. Throwing away games is, is not acceptable. And it's going to be the Pacers off the tip. Now, here's Brogdon. The pass to Levert. Into the lane. And he finishes it off with a one-handed jam. Man, what an athlete. Once he gets ahead of steam, Harris Levert is impossible to stop. Good luck trying. And Adams kicks to Brooks. Here's Bain. Off to a good start as he gets his first shot attempt. And I'll bet that's what they talked about before the game, getting the ball inside early. Here's Brogdon. Pass to Levert. He feeds it to Turner. It's stolen by Adams. Right wing. Passes it to Brooks. left to the wing. Morant, that's for two. That drops and it Jump comes off an assist from Brooks. And that's just a great job of staying ready by Morant. He didn't need to dominate the ball to score there. On offense, here are the Pacers. They're coming into this game off that recent loss to Atlanta. Yeah, on the road, you're already a little out of your element. Then the misses from the line become contagious. And you know, one of the things about missing free throws is not only are you not getting more to yourself, but it allows the other team to maintain momentum or keep a rally going. And here's Morant following the three from Sabonis. He muscles it in through the contact and they call the foul. He's on his way to the free throw line. Off to a nice start here. They've hit all three from the field. First trip That's to the free throw line for, for him reason. tonight. Got to admire Jackson what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 
And guys, I think that's a tribute to his work ethic. I mean, it's not by accident that he's enjoying the success he is at the free throw line. Man, you have to respect Jaron Jackson's toughness. This kid has had some early injury struggles, but he always returns to the floor determined to pick up right where he left off. Now, here's Brogdon. He points his last outing. Sabonis trying to get open. The shot by Brogdon, no good. For Memphis, they've gotten their first three shots to go in for him to start off this game. And coming out of high school, John Moran said he was a no-star recruit. One reason he may have been overlooked was his small-town upbringing. Growing up in Dalzell, South Carolina. Feeds it to Turner. First shot, My first pass. He's better. out of the blocks fast. From Does a nice Malcolm job Brogdon. at capitalizing in the screen and roll. I mean, Turner's IQ and size. Tough to contain when he's rolling to the basket. Indiana and foul, foul on the shot, Michael so Turner. he'll get a chance at the line. That's his first and even though foul. he played on an AAU team foul. with Zion Williams, you know, scouts great for looking right past John Steven Morant. Adams. And, and didn't get a two lot shots. of offers at first. After two years at Murray State, he joined Steph Curry and Damian Willard as another star point guard out of a mid-major program. And to this day, he carries that underdog chip on his shoulders. No good on the free throw. And I've heard Adams is a big gamer. Video games. I mean, he doesn't watch sports in his off time like a lot of guys. He'd rather have a controller in his hand. And the second free throw, good. And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Rodd in the pass to turn. Levert against Adams. Back to Turner. Pass to Levert. Six to shoot. Indiana needs to get a shot off. And here's Brockton from the arc. The rebound by Steven Adams. Memphis leading. With the drive. Bain, no good. Those are chances. Almost always you can rely on him to get you two points, but the D just enough to keep him out of rhythm. And here's Moran. He'll bring it up for the Memphis Grizzlies. This their first chance this season playing the Pacers. And it wasn't a matchup they fared well in last year as they just couldn't figure this team out. 0-2 oh, for them in this matchup Turner. last year. Both teams fighting every second of the way trying to push into the playoff in their respective conferences. There's Morant following the score by Miles Turner. Here's Bain. Pacers and oh boy, a lot of contact Miles there, Turner. but he gets the call. Shoot no question he got caught on that shot. Yeah, the officials yeah, didn't need to talk to that Grizzlies. one over. It was obvious. Desmond it's his Bay. first trip to the line. Taking Gotta shots. admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? And I'll tell you guys, I mean, to see the improvement he's made in his free throw shooting in the space of just one season, I think it's been remarkable. The first one falls. The Pacers making a switch here. Warren's checked in. So he hits both. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. Rogged in the pass to Sabonis. Now Lavert. He's coming off a 25 point game against the net. Boy, Karis Lavert has done a nice job Defensive elevating foul. his playmaking ability, that's which helps him and his team. First team foul. The Pacers shooting their that's first foul shot of the night. Yeah, and over the Tony course Craig. of the season, they're One respectable, 78%. That comes in handy in close games. And this year, they haven't quite been able to maintain the free throw percentage they had last season. That's good from Craig. Memphis trailing here. Morant with it. Game against Oklahoma City, very impressive. Now the pass to Bain. 
takes the three. Oh, and the jam by Adams. They have to put a body on Adams. He's too good of an offensive rebounder to not pay attention. On our at and 5G Slam Cam, you just saw an explosive highlight. And it's Brogdon off the cry. Tries again. And contact on the foul. shot, so he'll be shooting for the throws here. That's his first personal foul. One's on Morant. Second team nice foul. work to get it inside and draw the That's contact. The exactly. For the the defense determined not to no, allow the easy layup good. right there. Two. He'll settle for Shots. making him earn the free throws. That free throw good from Brogdon. Despite being a first-team All-American in college, Malcolm Brogdon Clark was a second-round pick in 2016. Yeah, NBA teams found out quickly that they had slept on this guy. He won Rookie of the Year, the first winner drafted in the second round since 1965, Kevin. And his numbers have only gone up. Malcolm's become one of the game's more reliable guards, and his leadership is platinum level. Now here's Morant. He is averaging just around 28 and a half points a game. So many offensive skills in his toolkit. Indiana leading. Outside Warren. Morant comes with the double team. And wrestling for it there, but no one has possession. We'll have a jump ball. And now let's revisit that exceptional mobile one block. And right out of the gate, trying to set the tone defensively, you gotta love that energy. So it's the Pacers now. Here's Bain, Craig defending, it's blocked. And now the Pacers break, Brogdon with the ball. It's rebounded by Memphis. Boy, just cannot buy a bucket, guys. I'll tell you what, that's a painful quarter for him, and it's painful for me to watch, too. Back to Brooks. To the middle. Here's Jackson. Levert grabs the miss. For Indiana, they've gotten five of ten shots to drop in this game so far. Right at the 50% mark. Two free throws this coming up, and they call the shooting foul. That's his I think first a lot foul. of people expected great things from Sabonis purely because Come his on. father was the stuff of legends. Yeah, Greg, Sabonis. you're right. His dad, Arvidas Sabonis, is one of Europe's all-time basketball greats. But Domas has really lived up to that legacy as far as I see it. I mean, he's a star in his own right with multiple all-star selections to his name and perhaps a few more in his future. First free throw is good. And a lot can be said about DeMontis Sabonis' scoring ability. But everything else he does, he also excels at. Also a terrific passer for a big man. T.J. McConnell, he's checked in for Malcolm Brogdon. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. You know, when you think about the other areas where Sabonis stands out, Rebounding has to come to mind as well. Yeah, and Kevin, he, he's a guy who fights for possessions. Not going to overwhelm you athletically, but he knows his team relies on him to be a force on the glass. So he's never afraid to get physical to win those battles. Taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, we didn't expect to see that kind of finish. And you know, guys, when your point guard is making explosive plays at the rim, I really do think it sets the tone for the rest of the team. And it's the Pacers with the ball. Grizzlies making the shot. Levert is always aggressive. I like that mindset of his, especially in how he drives to the rim playing downhill. Goes there with a lot of speed. Moran finds Adams. Here's Payne. Levert grabs the miss. Levert's got his fourth rebound in this one. 
yet. That's another miss for him. They're behind in this game largely because he shot so poorly. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two and the free throw line. Can't afford to be too handy with Sabonis. He's very good at forcing the issue and getting these calls. On the night, he's gone two for two at the strike. And so far this season, it's, it's been average at best at the line. Only 71% as a shooter. You know, his free throw percentage has dropped this year, but not really enough to raise any red flags or to become alarmed about it. And the first one drops. I look at Sabonis as a terrific stretch four. He's a guy who can play either power forward or center, and he has excellent length and a nice touch. Catching up on the changes now for Indiana. Brissett has checked in for Torrey Craig. And Jeremy Lamb subbed in for Karis LeVert. The Anthony Melt. He's checked in for Memphis. And Sabonis drops them both. And doing a good job getting to the line and capitalizing. Exactly. I mean, that's what's helped them build this early lead. Melton passes to Adams, and Adams Steven with the slam. Oh, he threw that one down. Adams, one of the fiercest competitors in the league. Pacers leading by four. And here's McConnell. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Warren, good. Somebody that's really comfortable carrying the offensive load. For Memphis, they've gone 6 of 14 shooting the ball since the start of the game. Now, here's Melton. A look at his stance. He averages a bit over eight points a game. Bangs home the trifecta. And he likes to get in a rhythm early. Nice triple. Indiana's gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. McConnell passes to Sabonis. Now, here's McConnell. He's guarded by Melton. And out of bounds as the Grizzlies get possession. The Grizzlies trail by three. Pass to Bain. Now, here's Melton. Guarded closer. Jackson Jerry gets the Jackson bucket. Jr. And how about the strength Assistant of Jackson there? The he uses Melton. it whenever he's going up inside and fighting through the contact. Pacers have gone 7 of 13, just over 50% from the floor. Some good looks. This is it to land. Driving the lane. That one, no good. And the Grizzlies going the other way now. And already, they've staked out a noticeable advantage in terms of aggression and controlling the backfield. And the trend they'd love to continue right through the next three quarters as well. Now here's Jackson. He's got five. Inside, here's Adams in the hoop for his Steven third Adams. make from the field. He's three for four thus far in the contest. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. Great open look there. Just focusing on the task at hand. That's all you can do. Yeah, these teams trading punches right now. I mean, it's table tennis. Back and forth we go. Now, here's Melton. Here's Bain. There's the double team with Lamb. Down to five on the shot clock. Brooks from outside. And again, it's the Grizzlies from deep. Three points. And an eye for an eye. Both teams working to stretch the floor. Nothing like answering back. One team gets three, you fire three of your own. Boom. Indiana's gone two or three for deep so far in this game. So timeout time called here the first to the four, Pacers. Indiana. Uh, adjustments are a part of the game, and the coach sees something he doesn't like here. And you know what? We'll see what changes he makes coming out of this timeout. What's a teacher? Make some noise! Xavier Tillman. And it's the Pacers with the ball. They trail by one. The shot by McConnell, no good. 
Oh, you, you've got to be able to deliver when you get a bunny like that. That's just too easy of a shot to miss. Pass to Tillman. Here's Bain, covered by Lamb. Bain passes to Tillman. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. And now a three-point Grizzly lead. I mean, the number of points they've scored in the paint already here is eye-opening. Lamb with the bounce pass. Sabonis kicks to Lamb. Two and the Pacers the can't get it to go. Memphis leading by three. Here's Brooks. Here he goes. A, a solid distributor. I, I think Jackson is gifted at reading defenses and then being able to spot the open team. And for the Pacers, they're shooting at around 44% in the early goings here. Here's Lamb. Good. And McConnell gets the assist. McConnell's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. Here are the Grizzlies with the ball. They're on a 16-7 run. Brooks, the pass to Bain. Here's Melton. Off target with his three. Warren against Brooks. And Warren, here we go. That's basket number two with his third shot off to a fast two for three. I see you, T.J. Warren, getting assertive on the drive that time. Here's Bain, covered by Lamb. And here's Brooks from outside. And DeMontis Sabonis pulls it down. Indiana trailing here. Outside, Lamb. Second chance effort. The kick out to Sabonis. They shoot again. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. From yeah, I like Sabonis' game inside because he's confident and skilled. And it's Desmond Bain with the foul. That's foul number two for him. Already his second foul. He's in danger of getting into serious foul trouble early in this game. Indiana's gone two or three from deep so far in this game. Here's McConnell. It's good. And it's a three-point Indiana lead. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Shot and game clock separated by five. Good on the three-point shot. Melton's got six. Already finding his spots and capitalizing, playing really efficient basketball. Here's Warren. Drives to the hoop. That's good, and he's now three for four from the field. Well, I tell you what, I love watching Warren match the defense's intensity and still be able to convert. This is a hard-nosed, really good offensive play. Bain inside the three-point line. That one's not going to go. It's been all about Demonis Sabonis for Indiana. Between his points and his rebounds, he was a star for him in that quarter. And we'll be back with you shortly. And one of the league leaders in steals and deflections, T.J. McConnell explains how he causes havoc on the floor. It's all about just reading the way they're passing the ball in. Um, if I see a moment of weakness where they dislodge and give me a chance to get in and get my hand in there, I try to take advantage of it. He does, but he is all hustle. An undrafted pack in 2015, but that energy and effort is what's earned McConnell a place in this league. And this has been a fairly close game through the first quarter, and we'll see what happens here in the second. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Pacers. John Moran. Well, I like the fact they've already been getting a lot of high-quality shots in the paint. Yeah, but and they've also balanced that, though, guys, with the attack off the bounce as well to get them some points. And now brought to you by Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset our lineups. And so in the game for the Pacers, McConnell and Lamb in the backcourt. And there's Miles Turner. Then there's Warren, and it's Brissett in at the four. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Good evening, Kevin. 
Malcolm Brogdon has become a Pacers stalwart. He said, I fit the identity of this team as an underdog that overperforms and proves to be wrong. It has to be the leader of this team. I lead with my voice and by example. I'll be fearless on the court so that my teammates can follow. Kevin? Love what he's about, David. Thank you. Here's one. Grizzlies making the shot. Outside turn. Launches it. Rebounded by Jackson. Jackson's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Moran finds Jackson. Memphis moving that ball around. And there's the pass to Tillman. Jackson trying to break free. Tillman's shot is off. And uh, Indiana shooting 48% from the field. Not bad at all. Moran's against McConnell. And Greg, some star big men have complained that they get hacked all game long. But they're not getting the foul calls these guards do on the perimeter. I have to agree. <laughs> I mean, a lot of those fouls, the guards get three free throws. So something the league first team foul. might want to take a look at trying Shooting to balance things out. Desmond Bay. And guys, let's get your take the on the scoring right breakdown for the Grizzlies. They pounded the ball inside in the first half, forcing the D to collapse, and that frees up the shooters going forward. They've been distributing the ball really well tonight, too. I mean, a decent number of assists so far for them. And he knocks down the first one. Indiana making some changes. Torrey Craig, he's checked in for T.J. Warren. Karis Levert comes in for Jeremy Lamb. And Brogdon subbed in for T.J. McConnell. Good on both. Now Brogdon. Some stands for him. He averages over 21 points a game. And we're about two minutes into the second quarter here. Lavert with it. He's someone who's a factor on any given night, averaging more than 22 points a game. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Moran kicks to Brooks. Morant against Brogdon. Morant passes to Tillman. Just five to shoot. Morant with it. He's picked up by Levert. Pacers trail by four. Down low, Turner. And it's Turner finishing it off. Oh, that's just too easy, guys. Turner, a player you can't allow to get free near the rack. He's a great dunker. Bang. Pass to Brooks. Here's Bain. And another miss by Memphis. For Indiana, they've gotten off to a rough start here in the second quarter, going just one for five. How about that Malcolm Brogdon throwing it down? He doesn't do that a lot, but he did that one with four. So timeout call here. The first for Memphis. They want to keep rolling here following the win against the Thunder. And really showed their depth when they needed it most. On the road, having to manufacture points. And, you know, the guys on the bench have great confidence in themselves. And when their name was called, they were ready to compete and contribute. And the Bruce plays with some changes. Brandon Clark comes in for Tillman. And Conchar subbed in for Bain. And so Morant will bring it up for the Grizzlies. Their defense has only allowed four points in the quarter. Passes it to Jackson. Back to Morant. And he drives in the dish to Jackson. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. Here's Brogdon. A miss that time would have put him up. Memphis has gone three of six tonight when they've let it fly from downtown. Oh. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play that chance for him. And he plays with swagger. Shooting and when Memphis. Brooks makes plays like Dylan that, Brooks. it just fuels shooting his fire one. even more. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. Gotta admire what he's been able to do at the free throw line this season. How about over 90%? And, you know, with those numbers, he makes a defender hesitant to get too tight on him. I mean, he doesn't want to get whistled for the foul and put this guy on the line. 
No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. One way to protect the lead, knock down those free throws and 100% free throwing for the quarter. That's superb. Now here's Levert. Driving to the basket. And down it goes. Jamming that one home. Getting smarter at reading these situations, guys. Levert's basketball IQ and pick and rolls ascending. You know, I think of Karis Levert as one of those guys capable of going off on any given night for big numbers. He has that kind of explosive ability offensively. Whistle blows, basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. So Moran will go to the free throw line. It's going to be on Miles' turn. And that explosiveness of Levert. It, we've seen it on nights when he gets hot and becomes unstoppable. Greg, how about that game in 2020 when he went for 37 points in the fourth quarter and overtime alone? Levert's a player that doesn't know the meaning of the phrase heat check. He can give it to you, boy. That's good from Morant. Already embracing his role as a leader on this team. Morant brings a strong work ethic and winning mentality to this team. Now, here's Brockton. Takes it inside. Some solid defense from Clark. Memphis leading by four. Here's Conchar. Right side Jackson from 12 feet out. And the Grizzlies check on two more. And great from deep, Jackson. No issues hitting the mid-range either. Another big who has range in the new NBA. Indiana's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Brogdon outside. Pass to LeBert. To the paint. And Turner the bucket on the assist by LeBert. And it's eight points for Miles Turner. Boy, very nice read that time from LeVert. He's a guy who racks up the assist. Very good feel on offense. Jackson passes to Morant. And the call on five. the shot Malcolm sends him to the line. Yeah. That's his first That's on Malcolm Brogdon. Fourth team foul. And if you're wondering if John Morant lacks for confidence, well, look no further than his point guard moniker. This kid is fearless, and he's hungry, and he plays with that proverbial chip on his shoulder. That's good from Morant. And, Craig, you talk about the fearlessness for Morant. Reminiscent of Allen Iverson, the way he throws his body all around. I mean, get knocked down, get right back up. At the same time, at 6'3", he can add strength to that frame. I know that's the goal of his as he looks to absorb contact and dish out a little of his own. And just a much better job of attacking and getting to the line here in the second quarter. Didn't have a single Indiana attempt in the first. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. And as the coaches go to the clipboard to outline their strategy during the timeout, the players getting a chance to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's key to staying fresh all the way to the final whistle. And Kevin, it really is. And every one of these players knows it. They're all making sure to stay hydrated. It's impossible to play your A game if you're not getting enough to drink, especially uh, towards the end of games when the physical toll of a long contest really starts to add up. Now, here's Levert. He's got six. Brogdon the pass to Turner. Back to Brogdon. To the inside. Shot is good, and the Memphis leads cut down to just four points to the bucket from Turner. Boy, tough trying to match Turner's intensity. I mean, once he's committed to scoring the ball, you're not stopping him. Here's the pass to Concha. Kicks to Brooks. Pass to Jackson. Shot clock at six. Here's Morant. It's good. The assist this time from Jackson. Jackson's got three assists now in this one. His shooting has been outstanding. <laughs> Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. The Pacers have gone 5 of 11 from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. 
Dived in the pass to Levert. There's the try. It's rebounded by Memphis. Jackson up top. There's the feed to Brooks. And a beautiful feed to leads to a monster jam. Man, you like to see this from Brooks, right? No need to fall in love with the jump shot. Give the defense different looks. Rod in the pass to Levert. And there's the try. Looks good. It is good. Bucket number four from the field. He's taken only six shots. And the defense no factor, which is why he simply laid it in. Morant against Gray. And out of bounds as the Grizzlies gain possession. Sabonis is checked in for Indiana. Steven Adams, he's checked in for the Grizzlies. DeAnthony Melton comes in for John Morant. And here's Melton. He points his last outing. Passes to Adams. Here's Conchar. Six on the shot clock. Brooks misses. Pacers trail by six. Pass to Levert. Sabonis trying to get open. A nice shot by Levert. Levert's got six in the quarter. And he is really in a zone right now, playing and scoring with confidence. Kanjo. The Grizzlies with another miss. And so it's Brogdon with it. He brings it up for the Pacers. And he bangs it home with one hand. Yeah, Levert's so good at getting to his spots and capitalizing once there. Fun to watch him when he gets rolling like this. Melton feeling it out a bit. It's over Brogdon. Melton no good. The Pacers have gone 8 of 16 from the field in the second quarter. A nice, efficient 50%. They get the rebound. And the bucket is good. Three-point play chance here for him. It's not hard to see why they are giving up points on Steven this one. Just too many good looks first. from in close. First team that was one of the things most fans don't notice. But Malcolm Brogdon, Greg, is one of the best free-throw shooters ever. How about that a year? where he shot 93% from the line to lead the NBA. And for his career, just about a 90% shooter. That's a huge advantage for a point guard like Brogdon, a guy who handles the ball late in close games. Oh, I love the leadership of Brogdon. Always hard at work for his team. He's facilitating, communicating, providing offensive energy and direction. Love what this guy brings to the court. Now, here's Melton. Six points for him. No good, unable to end this run. He's cooled down a little bit after draining those two three-pointers in the first quarter. Here's Lamb. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. Jackson Jr. No matter what happens over the course of Jeremy Lamb's pro career, Clark, he'll always be able to look back at his national championship in back in 2011. Yeah, those banners and trophies are not... Recallable, and you've been part of one as he was with Connecticut. It's part of you for life, and he was a huge part of that team that won it in 2011. They weren't picked by too many people to take the crown, but Lamb hit his stride at the perfect time in that year's tournament. The free throw drops for Lamb. I really believe the more playing time that Lamb gets, the better he'll become. He still has the potential in my mind to be a very solid player in this league. And Indiana making a change here. Warren's checked in. And Lamb drops them both. And so it's Memphis with it. It's a three-point game. Melton passes to Brooks. He dishes it to Jackson. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. That's his second three It's going to go on Sabonis. And between his footwork and height, Shooting for Jackson Memphis. is a tough Jerry matchup Jackson for defenders. Jr. Here he takes Taking full shots. advantage and draws the foul. First free throw is good. 
They've hit every one of their free throws here in the second quarter. Very important when you're trailing. Jackson hits both of them. And the Pacers with possession here. McConnell passes to Turner. Dishes to land. Now, here's McConnell. He's guarded by Steven Melvin. Adams. And there's the foul. That's, the Steven Steven Adams. Adams. That's foul five. number two for him. Yeah, clearly he had an established position there. Yeah, and, and I, I like this call because you want the refs in that situation. If there's any doubt, err on the side of giving the benefit of the doubt to the offensive player. That should have been a block, and it was. Now, here's McConnell. Taking a look at his stance, he's averaging around seven and a half points a game. The shot by Turner, no good. You know, defensively, you just can't afford to give him that much room. They're fortunate that he missed that one. Jackson looking around. It's tipped and stolen by McConnell. Outside, Lamb. Driving inside. And here comes Jackson leading the fast break. Rebounded by Lamb. Indiana leading. Over in the corner, Warren. And the Pacers can't get it to go. Grizzlies have gone 7 of 16, shooting just under 50% here in the second quarter. Now, here's Melton, defended by Sabonis. Adam lays it up and in off the pretty assist. And it's nine points for Steven Adams. And how about the power by Adams on that finish? Just brushes off the contact. Indiana's got nothing but zeros from long range in the second quarter. 0 of 4. Lamb up top. He's got seven. That's a bucket. His third of the game. He shot the ball seven times. They're consistently finding ways to get the ball inside and taking full advantage. Pretty clear. It's smash mouth basketball. Pound that thing inside. And that one is good. Steven Adams. Adams has got 11 points. And this is where Adams has the biggest impact. The closer to the basket, the more effective he is. 129 left to play here in the half. McConnell passes to Warren. Driving in. That one misses. And it's Memphis the other way. The tray. Pacers with the rebound. Lamb's got his fourth rebound in this one. Now here's McConnell. He's guarded by Melton. The shot by McConnell, no good. Memphis leading. Here's Conchar. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Jackson misses. Pacer shooting with 42% accuracy in the second quarter. Fires from deep. No good from Lamb. And Adams has got the ball here for Memphis. Now, here's Melton. He's got six. Brooks, the pass to Concha. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points That's at the line. Yeah, it's going to be on Miles' turn. is in the penalty. This is his first trip to the line tonight. Shooting for Memphis. John Concha. Two shots. He makes the first. Torrey Craig, he's checked in for Miles Turner. Then for the Grizzlies, Anderson, he's checked in for Jaron Jackson. Williams comes in for Brooks. And it's John Morant in for DeAnthony Melton. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Pacers trail by three. Now Warren, 11 points for him in that last game against Atlanta. 
And the pass to Sabonis. Excellent D there from Williams. From deep. And the last second attempt doesn't fall. John Moran has been leading the charge, guys, for the Memphis Grizzlies. He finishes with nine points in the quarter. The D is having all sorts of problems with him. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Rick, what's your analysis of how your defense has done so far? Well, they're getting too many open looks at threes. We're lucky they're missing a few. You know, this team, they stretch out so much, you got to be really alert. you got to pay your close attention to details. Rick, thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. There was no stopping John Morant in the first half. He had 13 points, five rebounds, and one assist. Kenny, what'd you think about the Grizzlies? The role could be unfriendly, and they've clearly risen to the challenge. They're shrugging off the chance from the fans. Defense, you saw it. That's no, no, no. They're playing the FBO, and they're getting to work. They're playing with a lot of confidence right now. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Indiana? It's the work they've done in the paint that's impressed me the most. A lot of their points have come from the inside. They need to keep that production in the post coming in the second half. 